Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Oxygen Not Included. In the previous episode we hooked up the Cool Salt Slush Geyser, already preparing ourselves for future water generation. Right in the beginning of this episode I would like to take care of the polluted water. We want to be able to convert it back into fresh water, kill off all the germs and add to our fresh water tank. Now one question is, are we going to use a different water sieve or just this one here? Well, maybe let's get started with a liquid pump. We're gonna put that right here at the bottom of the pool. Using some insulated piping, we can just hop over here, use a liquid bridge, and we join the water sieve. However, we wanna control the whole shebang with a hydro sensor. Let's set this guy up right here. So if the liquid reaches this area, we want the pump to activate. And we can just go straight down. Wonderful. Do we have a power cable nearby that can take it? 1060 watts already, I guess we can actually risk it. Let's just do it. If it overloads, we know what to fix. With that out of the way, we should be able to just branch off here. This allows me to still have all of these pipes full and then the rest is just gonna go into this direction. If we want it, we could even set up a priority for this. Yeah, this might actually even be better. We set up a bridge here. We don't need to set up the bridge there instead. So we can just cut this off and connect these so now the fresh germy water will first go into the input of the pipe, fill this loop up before it even attempts to go down. If we just had an intersection, it would alternate. So we have that fresh germy water. This needs to go into a liquid reservoir in a room full of chlorine. Because we don't have access to plastics yet, we're gonna go with the simplest of designs. Actually, let me move these. If I can, I would like to see these at least one more block down. So maybe let's unpause and let the duplicants already build everything. I believe, 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 I believe. Three liquid reservoirs should be enough, but I want to make sure we daisy chain enough just to make sure all the germs are gone. So I'm going to go with five. We simply join the input of the first reservoir, go to the input of the second one. Actually, we have to staircase like so, but that is fine. And we can just daisy chain it like this. At the end of it, we should be able to trust it. I don't think I already have a germ sensor. Let me see. No, technically, just to be 100% sure, we could have a germ sensor. I mean, why not go ahead and actually research that? There's not much to do and we can be on the safe side. So here I would have my germ sensor together with a liquid shutoff. Actually, because of the space, we need to build it a little bit differently. Let's say the germ sensor is going to be here. Then we have a liquid shutoff to decide in which direction the water should go. If the water still contains germs, then we want to go back into the input of the first reservoir. Oh, you know what? I just noticed this pipe here is only really temporary. We don't even need that technically. We can just get rid of it. And we're gonna make sure we route the polluted water from outside the base differently. This is gonna allow me to do this more elegantly by having the sensor here and then a shut off with the pipe continuing. So we don't even need to deconstruct these. And this pipe is just gonna go back into the input. We're gonna have the liquid shut off right there. And now we're just waiting for Devon to research the new sensor. Wonderful, research just completed and they made some progress. Let's see what we unlocked. Liquid pipe germ sensor. Oh, darn it, it actually requires some plastics. So we are just gonna make sure to have enough reservoirs. I was thinking if this worked, maybe we can get away with just one or two reservoirs. But in this case, we can just forget about the loop because, well, I do not intend to have plastic in the amount of time I want this completed. That means we don't need a loop back. All of this doesn't need to be built. And instead, we're gonna move over and directly release the fresh water, hopefully without germs, into our water tank right there. Now I set up this little barrier because obviously we want to go ahead and also pump this room out. One gas pump for you. You go there. We're gonna move this over. And if I'm not mistaken, yeah, we're gonna be good. If we actually pump it down below at the carbon dioxide layer, we're gonna be more successful pressure wise. Also, we're gonna temporarily borrow some power. Wonderful. Yeah, I did forget the germ sensor also requires plastics, but we don't need it. And maybe this is a good example for a early game contraption without access to plastic. And there it is. We are pumping away. Sometimes we're gonna be blocked. Actually, we might be blocked more often than necessary. Yeah, this is also a thing. The high gas pressure vent only comes with plastics too. But here we go. I think overall it's gonna be good enough to pump out this room. 
Our food situation, by the way, at the moment is extremely stable at around 20 to 30,000 kilocalories of gristle berries. Who knows, maybe soon enough we're gonna make another switch to grub fruit preserve that would give us a morale of plus 8, which is insane, and we just need grub fruit. So it would have the same quality as barbecue, and we would not have to ranch all those animals. I'm gonna change these tasks to airflow tasks when I get rid of some of this carbon dioxide. And yeah, hopefully soon enough my duplicates are gonna build the rest of these pipes, that would be great. Feels a little bit like they're slacking around. There it goes. Now this area can get a breather and hopefully this gas vent is not gonna be overpressured anymore. I mean, there was a lot of carbon dioxide accumulating. We got a full storage chest. I think I wanna make sure we always have some ice in here. So I'm gonna distribute a couple of storage chests in order to distribute the temperature of the ice as well. Right now we are a tiny bit over temperature. I guess we can cool it down, but we need to be careful. This water here, for instance, is already down to 17 degrees. So maybe it's not too bad we get some warm water now. Holy cow, I almost forgot. I do not want that water right now. We want to connect it after the fact. Oh my gosh, I almost forgot about that. Also, we need a storage bin right there. Is this already vacuumed? No. Let's copy over this setting here. We want all ice and snow to land in these storage bins. Looks like we have almost achieved a vacuum here. Just a couple of micrograms left. After this is done, we will fill up the storage bin with bleach stone. That is just the easiest way to get chlorine in the joint. We could also go through the effort of pumping some up, but generally I like to let it accumulate a little bit. I mean, this is just not worth it. And we already somewhere have a chest full of bleach stone, I think. Oh, wait. Yeah, there it is. 375 kilograms of it. So bleach stone, as of this point, is gonna be stored in the storage bin. And it actually happened. We can do it. I'm gonna take out bleach stone from this storage bin and instead we're gonna store it here under consumable ore. And it needs to have the highest priority because it is so quick to disappear if it doesn't get tended to. Uh, wait a second. I actually want to change that. Let me get rid of that one more time. Camille should drop it. Thank you. What I would like to do is get rid of the pump and everything first and then close off the room. I think that makes more sense. We don't really need access to the room after the fact. Or do we for this storage bin? I was kind of thinking I could potentially access it through the corner here. I'm not even sure if that's possible. I have to test. But yeah, let's get rid of all of this shebang, including the pump. Okay, moment of truth. Can we actually access this storage bin? Okay, it doesn't look good. So far, nobody is picking up the bleach stone. I happen to know that auto sweepers are capable of doing this. Also, if I wanted to build a tile here, a duplicant could do it. So I was kind of assuming maybe we can also reach the storage bin. So for the sake of being able to get back into here in order to change something and get access to the bleach stone, I'm gonna make a little liquid lock for this. Ooh, I believe we might have found our rancher with plus nine husbandry already. Early bird, green thumb, unempathetic, we can deal with that. Binge eater, that's a little bit worrying, but I would be alright with it. Cycle 136, I mean it's not too far in and it would really be good to have ranching. Even if it is just to have an easier job keeping the critters alive one at a time. You are gonna be our new guy. We're gonna print this guy, make him a bed right away. You're also gonna get a, your separate mess table over there. And we kind of want to make sure he works during the early hours. I'm already gonna add our third shift actually. Let's do that. Shift 3. All work. And then we are gonna start with downtime right there. So the early hours are gonna be work hours for them. And then some bedtime slots. Wonderful. And of course, a bird. You want to go there. Okay, that should be fine. Priorities. Bird, you don't want to do things, of course, but you want to do ranching. You are also fond of farming. I guess we can have him as our secondary farmer once we really need, you know, more food. And other than that, I guess he's just going to help doing what needs to be done. If you feel like something is not getting done quick enough, Bert is gonna be our guy. But for now, we need to go into skills and go into husbandry right away. For that, we need to do improved farming and then we're gonna go to critter ranching. Welcome to the tribe, Bert. Yes. Oh, he directly goes to work. That's the spirit. 
You know what? Screw all of this. We're gonna close the room off. What I want to do is store the bleedstone first, which should now be possible. Yeah, bleedstone is incoming. This is gonna fill up with chlorine. And I guess we don't actually need the storage bin anymore. I'm gonna store the bleedstone back in the polluted water once it's done its purpose. And that is filling up this setup with initial chlorine. At the moment we have 12 grams per tile or so. Let's see if it can off gas a little bit quicker this way. Emitting at 4000 milligrams per second, not too quickly. Maybe we can do something like this. As long as we have enough water, we can just open this up and we're not gonna run into problems. But I wanna make sure not to actually have chlorine in my base and I'm gonna get rid of it. I'm gonna leave the bleed stone right here until I feel like we have enough chlorine in the joint, but I'm not even sure. Maybe you only need a tiny amount and that is exactly what we shall do. But just for testing purposes, I'm gonna make a little safe game and then we are gonna let the water run through. I wanna know if additional measures are actually required. Let's see, maybe we bring this out one more block and add a liquid vent. That should do the trick. Et voila, we are ready. <gasps> what is this doing in here? I had no idea. We already had some stuff in there, but... Oh my gosh, hopefully you're not polluted yet. Well, you shouldn't be because you came out of the tank. Okay, that was my bad, but now let's hook it up, see what happens. Ah, there we go. There it comes. Now, this is definitely germy water. Remember, that comes out of the toilet. And if we have a look at that, just check the contents of the tank. Um, oh my gosh, hold the phone. Mm, it is going so quickly. <laughs> Wait a second, I think we might have to fill up one of the tanks first. Yeah, I don't actually think that did what it was supposed... Yeah, that did not what I wanted it to do. Okay, back to the drawing board. But I kind of had to test it, so I chose the lazy save and load method. If we have a look at the automation overlay, this output here sends a green signal when the reservoir is less than the low threshold. This means we could add a mechanism making sure we always have a little bit of liquid in those tanks. Let's say 50% of liquid before we actually allow the liquid to continue. How do we do that? Well, I want to take out some of these tiles and actually replace them with a mechanized airlock. If we can, we're gonna build it from down below, just because we can actually access the room without breaking the liquid lock. So that was extremely convenient to build it in this place. As mentioned, we then want to replace this with an airlock. And what we also need to do is hook up everything with the automation wire. So we want to go in here. Now let me see again. If the low threshold is reached, it sends a green signal. If we send a green signal, the door is going to open up and that means the reservoir is not capable of expelling the liquid anymore. It can still intake liquid, but it cannot expel it. This is going to make it very convenient because we can just hook up all of these guys to airlocks. And if we don't power the airlocks, we're not going to even require power for this. It's just going to run in the background. Okay, we almost replaced everything with the liquid locks. I had to get rid of the automation wire just so I'm able to actually build them. The automation wire, if it is just placed, is going to send a red signal. So the doors were actually closed. Let's decide on the threshold. I would like to open up the door and render the reservoir incapable of expelling the liquid if it gets lower than 20%. And then if it gets to around 50% or so, we want to send a red signal again. We can then copy over the settings for all the other reservoirs and they should be sending certain signals. Um, let me actually see. Obviously right now we are not in the threshold. We are at 0%. There we go, all the cables have been built. We're gonna finish this off by actually enclosing it. We cannot guarantee we always have a full pool of water and therefore we don't want to run the risk of losing the chlorine. Now, I'm actually a little bit more confident that this is gonna work. So we're gonna open up Pandora's box. It should just stay in the first liquid reservoir. There it goes in, it stays there and the germs can go down. It is gonna fill up the first liquid reservoir until we have reached the high threshold and then it is gonna close the door and the liquid can continue. So all of these reservoirs are gonna fill up to the same amount and then when new liquid is coming in, we can always make sure the germy water has to cycle through the reservoirs and cannot just shoot through without any effects. Unfortunately, within the pipes you cannot remove the germs. 
I set up a little bottle emptier here. I just noticed, unfortunately, we did get a little bit of water in here. But if we set up a liquid lock, which I believe this way, it should be easier. Then I might be able to get in there to save the day. We have four idle duplicates. The perfect sign it is time to clean up the mess here. We're just gonna make this temporary ladder system. I might just go ahead and remove everything in the end again. But I would like to see this all excavated no chance i'm gonna allow my duplicates to have nothing to do come on where are we okay i think now we can actually take away this insulated tile and because of this water piece we should be able to get in there and if we can mop up the water that would be great you cannot have your liquid reservoirs in a layer of water it's not gonna work oh uh, well you look at that that's just what i love about ani what a great game Okay, 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 I wanna mop, I wanna mop, I wanna mop, I wanna mop! I did it! I did it! I got the mop sign to appear. Wonderful. Let's build this back. I totally forgot, since we have new duplicates, we need at least two more plants. We should go ahead and actually fulfill this demand. Yes, we actually did it! Okay, now just somebody needs to build this tile before Otto gives up on sweeping. Uh, Devin, no, build! Somebody build the tile! Come on! Camille, yes! <laughs> love you okay now we just need to make sure this hydro sensor actually works if we are above 500 sure why not then we want to pump up the polluted water now all of this is gonna get cleaned and it's gonna go down into the purification system and it's as easy as it gets we're waiting for this storage bin to completely fill up and look at that it even struggles to add germs at this rate so I really think we don't even need more bleach stone, but you know, OCD. Okay, we are above 200 grams of chlorine per tile. I think it's enough. If I just look at the first tank and how quickly those germs disappear, even though we are adding more, I don't see a difference to having higher pressure. Bleach stone is a limited material and that means we're gonna store it back in this storage bin here. It was nice knowing you. And also with the water out of the way, we will be able to close this off. Somebody should hopefully grab the bleach stone before we start building this. Yes, Otto is there when we need him. Wonderful. Ah, ah, look at that. The first tank is actually full. It reached its threshold of 50% and now it's gonna let the water continue. However, since we are adding new water at this point, it is not gonna go down much. Ah, you gotta be... Ah, did this really just happen? Ugh. <laughs> I just hate it. I just hate it. How can I prevent this? Well, the liquid lock is still in place. So let's go back in. Devin, come on. Let's do this. I don't want anything to remain in this room. Can I please have that? Anyways, the second tank is now filling up and so it's just gonna daisy chain forward. And we can see in the second tank we already have way fewer germs. And that's why I thought three tanks are probably enough. Because the first tank is gonna have around 5000 germs, the second tank around 300 and the third tank should already be clean. But we wanted to be sure and this is the result. And then at the end of this, we can just dump it in our fresh water pool. There's just one thing that could make this better by suppressing the notification that these doors aren't powered. The only thing power does is make them open and close faster. It definitely not worth 120 watts. Also check this out, the second tank is now empty, so the third tank is filling up and right here the germs are gone. So if you build this for yourself, three tanks are probably enough, we just want it to be on the safe side. But in this case with just three tanks it's really a small contraption. I'm also gonna suppress the notification right there, I just think it looks ugly, it is supposed to be like this and if we copy the setting this should also be the case for all the others. Wonderful! Great! Okay, we're now purifying our water. I love it. Liquid vent goes right there. And we will get some fresh water and obviously we also have more space for our polluted water. Great stuff. I would say with that out of the way, we're gonna wrap it up for today's episode. We even got a new duplicant. Wonderful. A rancher. We can take care of our animals, which we shall do the next time. Where the heck is my hatch? Somewhere here should be a hatch. Ah, oh, what are you gonna do? But yeah, with that out of the way, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Have a great time and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.